Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Q Stare Q. What you gonna do? I don't know, but something's gonna grow. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Q Stare Q. Well, today wasn't the best day. The first thing that happened was it started raining. I mean, dousing while the sun was shining bright. There was not a cloud in the sky and all this water just started pouring from the sky. And I thought, oh well, God's promise is coming to us, the rainbow. We didn't get one. I don't know what happened, but usually if the sun is out and it's raining, usually you get a rainbow. So I said, well, I'm not gonna worry about that. So then the time came for me to go to the doctor. It's still pouring and the sun is still shining bright. This went on for at least 45 minutes. And the sun never did get get behind clouds, never did. But it rained all that time and never did a rainbow appear, which is very unusual. But anyway, it was almost, it was like three o'clock because I, uh, I was leaving early. My doctor's appointment was at four, but I needed to get some gas before I got there. And that was gonna make my route a lot longer. And with the traffic at that time of day, I said, well, let me leave early. I had my crochet in, so if even if I had to sit there at the doctor's office and wait, it wouldn't have bothered me at all. So anyway, I get to the car. First of all, I had to run through the pouring rain. Of course, I got wet. Get to the car, open the door, put the key in the ignition. It would not say a word. Car just as dead as a doornail. So I'm thinking that it's a, the battery because that battery is at least seven, eight years old. I, I purchased that battery back when I got the car and I've had the car since 2018. So we're looking at about six or seven years here. Uh, so I said, that's, that's what it is. So Crops and Robert is coming in the morning or tomorrow. I hope not in the morning, with, not with my sleep patterns lately, but he's supposed to come tomorrow and he's gonna check it out he'll determine it's the battery and so he'll i don't know if he'll jump it or if he'll uh uh he'll jump it or if he'll you know uh want to take the battery out because you have to take it out for the core otherwise you get the core charge when you buy a battery so then i'm pricing batteries don't you know these batteries cost anywhere from 250 to 300 i was like uh, -uh nope i'm finding a junkyard around here well, I checked with O'Reilly's and I see that they actually have batteries, the little cheap ones, because I am going to be getting another vehicle real soon. In fact, I almost bought another vehicle last week. I got pre-approved for the loan and everything, but it was a 2013 and for the price that he wanted, I figured that I could, and I might've told y'all about that. I'm not sure. But I, but after I thought about it for a minute, I said, wait a minute, I could probably get at least a 2015 or 16 for the amount that he was wanting for that 2013. Now he told me that the vehicle came out of Arizona. You know, that's one of the things where you have to trust somebody. It may have, and it may not have come out of Arizona. People can tell you anything. You know, I would need proof. In fact, the van that I had before the car that I have now, when I bought that vehicle, it was $1,700 clean as a whistle, didn't have hardly any mileage. And the guy said, oh, this, this came from a one-time owner in Georgia. Well, I tell you what, he was able to prove it to me because number one, he had all the paperwork where the one-time owner uh, did all the maintenance on the car, oil changes, all that stuff was there. And then when I applied for the loan, my credit union, pulled up is it called carfax not carfax what's that that one that tells you about every car that's made all you need is the vin number whatever that site is she went to that site and pulled up the information on that car and it proved to me that it came from georgia i told him i'll be back to purchase the car because i had to get the loan of course to get it and so uh my uh she's actually a friend of mine that i went to school with and grew up with she approved the loan and I told him that it was approved. He held the car for me. I told him I'll be there the next morning. And so he ended up buying my, the vehicle that I had. I had a Ford Taurus at the time 
and he had just bought that van to turn it over, but he was actually looking for something like a Ford Taurus, a smaller vehicle for his nephew to get back and forth to uh, school. He, he had just started uh, community college. And so he was like, the car that you have, which was actually a decent car, it ran really well. He's like, this is what I need for my nephew. And we ended up doing an even, no, did we do an even, no, 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 no. We didn't do an even trade, but I ended up only paying 700 and he gave me a thousand for that. And so I had gotten the loan and I was like, do I, you know, cause I could have easily, you know, taken the loan back or whatever and, and just said, okay, I only needed 700. But then I thought about it. I was like, no, I'm going to keep this because the van, I wanted to get new tires for it. And, uh, what else? Uh, oh, I wanted to get new mats. So I used that thousand dollars since I knew that it was a good vehicle and it was under a hundred thousand miles on it. And what year was that van? That van, let's see, I bought it in 2014. I think that van was like a 2008 or nine. But anyway, yeah, it was the same year that my car is now. I drove that van until it couldn't be driven no more. It, finally, something big enough happened with it to where my mechanic said it would do you better just to get another vehicle. Boy, it hurt me to my heart because that van was clean. But then when I get, when I got the car that I have now, I sold the van to a neighbor uh, at where I used to live on the, my old street. He had a business where he would buy cars off of people he'll just give you cash for the car and then he would flip the car and sell it. He knew that van was in good shape and I told him what was wrong with it. But other than that, he knew he could flip it cheaply because he was an auto mechanic and he ended up giving me, I told him I wanted a thousand for the van, but he gave me like 950 or something. He just refused to do the thousand and I took it because I was like, shoot, I need this money. <laughs> so anyway, that's the story of my van. And, uh, and what's happening now. So back to the me not getting that loan. Now I kind of wish that I had because that car was right at my fingertips. The guy was ready to sell it right then. And it was just a trust factor and I just didn't trust it. I needed some proof, you know, that this vehicle, and I guess uh, I could have gotten the VIN number and stuff and gotten the proof, but this guy was kind of rushing it too. Whereas when I bought the van, that guy wasn't rushing it. He was like, I'll hold it for you. And this guy was like, I'm not holding the vehicle. Anybody come with the cash, it's theirs and blah, blah. So I didn't, you know, I knew that I couldn't go through the tedious effort that I went through when I got the van. But anyway, anyway, so I ended up not getting it. Okay. I passed it up. So anyway, so now you know, I am going to continue looking for a vehicle, but in the meantime, if this is just the battery, because my car normally runs excellent. Y'all have seen me drive that raggedy thing. You know, that audulator is messed up, but that has nothing to do with the battery. That's the computer. And my car now, I probably wouldn't even sell it. <laughs> it's like, just junk it or sell it for two, three hundred dollars because it's really, you know, it's really not worth that much. But anyway, so anyway, so I'm looking for something. And so Robert will be here tomorrow. If it's the battery, then that buys me a little more time. But uh, in the meantime, I will keep looking because I know that I'm pre-approved for the loan. I just didn't want to have to take out a loan. I just paid one off last month and I'm about to pay off the second one I have, which was a small loan that I got for the, uh, for the greenhouse actually. So it was a very small loan. So I owe hardly anything on it. And so basically it's almost paid off and I wanted some free money at least. But anyway, needless to say, I could not get to the doctor on today because of that. So I had to call them and reschedule. So now I'm waiting until the end of August to get in. And I was lucky that they had a cancellation then because she said he's booked out clear until December. And with this throat issue, you know, this was something that I really looked forward to and today was the big day and of course got attacked by the evil one so therefore uh you know what can i do so hopefully it's just the battery and then i can move on and just look to go at the end of august and by then i will have gone to my other appointment a week before that one so it actually kind of falls into place now instead of me putting the cart before the horse so in the meantime i waited for the rain to stop 
got undressed and I was like, well, it's too hot to go outside and do anything. But what I did was I came in and I got my fall garden seeds sold. So here they are. So this is what I decided on. I did a, uh, two seeds of zucchini. I put two seeds in each tray. Uh, two seeds of zucchini, two seeds of yellow squash, two seeds of green bean, uh, and these are pole. Uh, actually, I did two uh, I did two, four, six, eight plants because I've got the 10 pole beans over there that are already growing. I've got the bush beans. I got a good harvest off of that on yesterday, a very good harvest. And I've got more green beans on there that just wasn't ready. I got a good harvest of Crowder peas on yesterday. Uh, let's see. And then I did a lot of sweet peas. I did two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 seeds of the sweet pea so if they all germinate that'll give me 12 sweet pea plants and that will give me some sweet peas and then i did a cabbage a broccoli or two cabbage seeds two broccoli seeds i always put two in two cauliflower and i decided to try kohlrabi again uh, i planted kohlrabi before when i lived at my old place and i was getting ready to move and so the plants had just got going good but I didn't want to disturb them, so I left them in the garden box there so that the, old, the new owner who bought the house would have some garden. I just brought my most important plants. I brought my perennials. I brought my grapevines at the time because that's the one year that I produced grapes, and I brought them here, and I did produce grapes that year. And, uh, and they were in the ground over there, so that ground was real fertile. But anyway, so I brought those two, and I brought my berry bushes, and I left the rest of the plants because she was a gardener. And so I said, you can take over the garden. You should get some good harvest. So the kohlrabi was one of them. So I decided, let's try this again since it's, it's a cold crop. So anyway, so they're planted, and I'm waiting on them to germinate. I should get germination by next week, so you will be hearing the whoop, whoop, whoop seed alerts y'all i got a honeydew i got a honeydew i got a honeydew Woo -hoo -hoo. actually i've got two honeydews but this one i'm waiting on the flower to open i've got plenty of male flowers so i can get this one hand pollinated there he is right there we're gonna name her we're gonna call it well it is a her you know what i'm gonna name her Hmm. What should I name her? I'm going to name her after one of y'all. I'm going to name her Jen. Okay, Jen. You got a plant named, a honeydew named after you. And then we have another one coming. I think this is a honeydew right here. Hold on. Let me, I got to take my glasses off to see. See this right here? Okay. Look at my dirty finger here. I'm going to focus in because it's going to be hard. There it is. See that? That little fuzz ball right there, that is a second honeydew, and next to it is a third honeydew that I saw. And there's a fourth one somewhere. No cantaloupe yet, y'all. None whatsoever. Oh, here's a honeydew right here. And I think this one's a new honeydew right there. Let's, let's inspect some more, because doggone it, I'm seeing honeydews. Oh, there's a honeydew. Okay, y'all, I'm loaded with honeydew, and I will pick some of them off because I don't know, and this is strictly from the fertilization, I don't know how strong this plant is to carry that many honeydew. I'm just thankful. I'll let them do as much as they can, and whichever ones are the worst are the ones that I will get rid of. Oh, here we go. I got cantaloupe, y'all. There's a cantaloupe down there forming. Two of them, actually. This is, let me make sure. Yep. No, that's the honeydew. Well, doggone it. Was I looking at her cantaloupe? Okay, y'all. Let's let's just end it. It is it's cantaloupe and honeydew. Ooh, and look at these cherry tomatoes. Let's pluck, pluck. Ooh, that one's really nice over here. Look at it, pluck. Oh, I'm having a good time with these cherry tomatoes. No sooner than I pluck, more come on, and, and they ripen up real quick. And I have some up front, too. Here's one. Oh, my God. Look at this. Woo wee I've been plucking them left and right up front, and I've got more flowers. They're coming. And I found out that these over here are called red currants, and I have a few over there still. I plucked a lot of them the other day. So those are red currants. 
I'm getting, I have more flowers on the Zan Marzano. I harvest, I harvested and dehydrated herbs on last night and I'm gonna get a few more today. So look at that. And they're coming up. I'm gonna be harvesting some more next week. Green's doing good, Swiss chard. This is our repetitive stuff. And it's about to rain again, y'all. Look at this. I'm getting more green zebra flowers. They're producing. My Cherokee purple is doing good. And I've got a second one over there. He's doing good too. I decided to keep the gooseberry because now it's starting to gooseberry for me. So it's producing. So since it's producing, I'll let her stay. I moved my strawberries to this little thing i'm hoping they take root and i need to get them watered yeah because the, the uh, soil is is really really dry here so i'm gonna get these water i'm just putting those runners there when i do that workshop uh for the keyhole garden usually a few guys come and when they come i'm gonna see if they'll move that garden table in here and then i'll just flip it over in here and fix it and then i will get it filled with soil and get those strawberries planted out before the end of the season. Green beans starting to bloom. My pole beans, they're all up in the cherry tree. Poor little cherry trees. <laughs> Look at that. And something's getting my leaves. So I've got a slug climbing somewhere. And I haven't seen any slugs. And this, why is this dry as a bone? I doused it this morning. Well, he'll have to wait till tomorrow. Okay, now... Let me show y'all what I did today and then we're gonna get off. I did not do the pathway behind the greenhouse. I did clean it up, but it wasn't enough plastic to cover that. And I couldn't get that cardboard torn. So therefore I said, I'm gonna have to wait. And of course, Thursday was the day that I was gonna get the, the weed block stuff. And because of the car battery, I probably won't be able to do it until next week. So it's a delay. I'm at a standstill now still have quite a bit of wood chips i'm knocking it i'm down scraping the ground now but i still have a lot over there so i know it's enough to do that pathway in the keyhole garden and hopefully it'll be enough to get this side of the greenhouse i factored in the other side of the greenhouse because with the keyhole garden being right next to it i already factored that in so the other side will be done i just want enough to do the side over here Okay, I decided to do under the bench after all. There was weed mat under there that was all tangled up. I spread that mess out and it was perfect. The only weeds I had were right along the side. So I got those pulled and cleaned up, spread that weed mat out and I went on and threw the, the wood chips under there. I think it looks a little better. I need to get it situated and get those pillows fluffed and clean. I cleaned out this flower bed wasn't too many it was a lot of dead flowers those were the weeds that were at the edge there and those flowers were all dead so i pulled them out and i pulled out the tiger lily stems that were dead and then i threw the mulch in and i need to get along the side too once i get some plastic down i came along the side and the front after i pulled the weeds of this bed because i already had plastic down and I left this clear plastic down for this side of the bed. So now, all that's left for now. Oh, and I did weed whack back here because I wanted to get an, a visual idea. And with all that jungly mess there, I could not even get a visual idea of how much, you know, what I would need. So I knocked everything down, pulled the weeds from along the fence. I got everything but at the back because my cord wouldn't fit anymore so now i know so from where you see that pile well actually from where the weed or the plastic is down here i'm gonna put more plastic coming all the way up and all the way down so i've got to do this whole this is part of the pathway then i'm gonna get around this way and alongside the greenhouse if i can but first we will do the keyhole garden area the plastic is already here so i am going to start that on tomorrow i can work on that part but the rest of it is at a standstill until i can get some more of the uh weed block stuff 
gonna get all up in here, get that hay thrown back into the keyhole garden and come along the side. So that will be it actually. And then if there's enough left over after I do both sides of the greenhouse, I'll throw whatever's left over, over there. <laughs> it might not be enough to do the whole thing, but I can at least do some of it. So, oh, and the other thing, my miracle. My miracle, my miracle. Look at it. I went after I got those leaves off yesterday. I think that's what it needed. It needed to get some extra energy to number one, push out the new leaves, which they are, which it is doing. But look at the old leaves. Look at them. This is the only one that's still kind of, but the leaves are hard. Look at that. The plant is living, y'all. It is it is going to survive. I might not get any fruit. It might be too late for that after, after my fatal error by moving it. But you never know. It might push out. If it start pushing out flowers again, there's always a chance. Cucumbers doing nice in there. The great pumpkin and the patty pan over there. It's growing slowly, but it's growing. And it's still on the stem, nice and strong. So I know that one was pollinated. And, oh, I'm looking to see if there's any more. There is one in the keyhole garden, and I'm hoping it gets pollinated. The corn, I put my stakes up today, but I haven't tied them yet. I'll be tying them soon because the next windstorm, they could blow over. So I wanna be proactive and get those staked before we get like a windstorm and it's about to storm now, I can see, because it's not even eight o'clock and it's getting darker by the second. Ooh, look at those tomatoes. Like I said, I got a good harvest on yesterday of the Crowder peas. I've got uh, the cream peas coming in, the white cream peas, they just haven't uh, matured yet. And I got a great harvest off of the green beans on yesterday. Oh, this is going back into the greenhouse tomorrow. This is taking off enough. This okra plant, it has taken off enough now that it needs more heat. So the greenhouse is hitting 90 every day. It's going to be perfect for that okra. Now that it's taken off, it's been fertilized. I can put it in the greenhouse and let it do its thing. I've got eggplants coming. As you can see, the flowers blooming and I have a few eggplants. So the butterflies or whatever bugs are doing whatever it is they're supposed to do. They got it pollinated. That's all that matters. Here's the green beans. Y'all haven't seen that in a few days. And as you can see, I have some smaller ones here that weren't ready. So I'm leaving those. Ooh, here's one here that that, that grew overnight. Two of them. I'm going to leave them. Okay. Something's messing with my peppers again because my leaves aren't looking as great. But look at these peppers, y'all. I'm loaded. Got peppers everywhere. Cherry peppers. Let's see, I saw, oh yeah, there's the banana peppers. I've got banana peppers in the keyhole garden. I've got peppers here. I have another macaroni coming. Two of them, actually. And this one, the, the uh, sweet lunchbox peppers, I lo uh, that, that was loaded when I bought it last week and it has already produced again. I'm not liking the, the, uh, the, the jambalaya okra, but I might put that back in the greenhouse too. Okay, one more thing and then I'm getting off because we're at 23 minutes. And it's about to rain. Here's Q, the cucumber. Ain't she beautiful? And I've got like seven of them on here now that I've counted. One died, but there's one right there. I, it's about seven. This, this plant is loaded right now. So, but this is my biggest one thus far. And it feels good, nice and hard and healthy. So I'm gonna let it keep going. And I haven't seen any more of those beetle bugs and I'm getting lit up by mosquitoes. So, okay, so I'm gonna end this cause I am not trying to get bit up today. Okay, so that's all I have for today. Yeah, I'm bummed out. What else can I do though? So I'm trying not to get stressed. That's the main thing. Stress is the worst thing for my health uh, with autoimmune disease. That's the worst thing. So I just calm myself down when my car wouldn't start. I chose not to get upset. 
And I just said, okay, it'll work out some kind of way. So, and it has, you know, with Robert coming on tomorrow, I'm quite sure he'll make sure that uh, I can get to where I need to go and do what I need to do. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to get off of here now because I'm tired. It's getting dark. It's about to storm, and I need to be inside. So I will talk to you guys later, and may God bless you all. Bye-bye.